I'm Mary Ann Manser, Clinical Specialist for Pomodyne. I've been a registered respiratory therapist for over 30 years practicing in the Chicagoland area. Today I am going to show you the Blum Tracheostomy 2 and its four unique inner cannulas. Standard cannula, subglottic suctioning cannula, speech cannula, and our low profile valve which is used for spontaneously breathing non-ventilated patients. Here we have the Blum Tracheostomy tube with the Viasis Avia ventilator. I will be demonstrating how the Blum Tracheostomy tube interacts with the Viasis Avia ventilator. This is the Blum standard cannula in use with the Viasis Avia ventilator. My ventilator settings are SIMV12, Tidal Volume of 600, and PEEP of 5. Insertion of the subglottic suctioning cannula, you will now hear an audible click indicating the cannula is now secured to the Blum outer cannula. Now we are using the Blum subglottic suctioning inner cannula. Our ventilator settings are the same, SIMV via 12, Tidal volume is 600, and PEEP of 5, and our peak pressures remain the same. Now we're using our Blum Speech Cannula. Ventilator settings are the same, SIMV at 12, Tidal Volume of 600, and PEEP of 5. Notice that there is a slight increase in the peak ventilating pressures. This is due to the narrowing at the flat valve at the bottom of the speech cannula. This, this increase in pressure is only seen inside the cannula, not in the lungs. During the use of the speech cannula, the exhaled air is redirected through the fenestration to the upper airway to produce speech. No exhaled air is being returned to the ventilator for monitor, monitoring, causing the low minute volume alarm to sound. Disabling the alarm is not advised. is a small bellows device that prevents nuisance alarms, which can occur when the Blum speech cannula is in use. It was, a it was developed to allow the low minute volume alarm to remain active at a minimal level. In order to prevent the low minute volume from alarming, we connect the EVR in line on the expiratory limb of the circuit at the expiratory inlet on the ventilator. The EVR works in conjunction with the compliance of the ventilator circuit to return a small volume of air to the ventilator during exhalation. After placing the EVR on the expiratory port of your ventilator, go into your alarm limits, go to your low minute volume alarm, turn that to zero, hit accept, then you're going to go to your low tidal volume alarm, and turn it down to 10 cc's, hit accept, and you will no longer get your nuisance alarm and your low tidal volume alarm will act as a disconnect. When using the speech cannula, we are able to maintain our PEEP level. As you can see, our PEEP is set at 5 centimeters of water pressure and our baseline is coming back down to 5 centimeters of water pressure. We do not recommend using the speech cannula on patients requiring a PEEP higher than 10 centimeters of water pressure. Remember, when using the speech cannula, either active or passive humidification can be used. When using passive humidification like an HME, be aware that no heat or moisture is going to be exchanged while the speech cannula is in use. This is because all of the air is being redirected out of the upper airway rather than back through the HME. When exhalation is incomplete, a percentage of inspired air remains trapped within the lungs causing a condition called auto-peep. 
If this condition becomes severe, pulmonary and cardiac issues can develop rapidly. A continuous high pressure alarm may be indicative of auto peep or air trapping. If this scenario should occur, the speech cannula should be removed immediately and replaced with a standard cannula. Prior to reinsertion of the speech cannula, verify that the patient has a patent upper airway and consider repositioning the patient. Also, suction the patient both above and below the cuff. If the ventilator starts to auto cycle while using the speech cannula, decrease the sensitivity so that the ventilator is less sensitive.